Hello World Wide Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality of the best hair. And with talk of Doom 2 on the horizon, which is Doom 5, but... Anyway, there's something far more difficult to accept than Doom's numerical system. The Doom Movie of 2005. Starring Carl Urban and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the Doom Movie is a movie called Doom. Despite the critical consensus's main complaint that only fans of the game will really get it, the story has next to nothing to do with the games outside of the fact that it takes place on Mars, there are marines with guns, and the monsters are designed after the art style used in Doom 3. It's almost like when Roger Ebert said that it's like having a kid overusing your computer that refuses to let you play. That was just his own take on writing fiction. As the movie actually has next to nothing to do with the games, what is it all about? Well, some weird experiments on Mars go horribly wrong, not involving hell or portal technology, but archaeology that led into biochemistry and an elite group of marines from Earth go forth to reclaim the facility. Also, they learn about the importance of family along the way. Which honestly sounds a hell of a lot more like Dead Space than Doom, but anyway, let's take a look at Doom and see if, despite having next to nothing to do with the games, it's still at least watchable. First things first, they gotta establish that the first archaeological discovery was on Earth, of portal technology itself. They call this portal the Ark. Twenty years later, we're still struggling to understand why it was built. No idea why this thing was made, but let's just call it the Ark. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if it was actually some ancient civilization's last-ditch efforts to survive some great catastrophe? <sighs> what are the odds of that? But yeah, they found an ancient portal between America and Mars, and now, in the mid-21st century, they've used it to explore and excavate the ruins on the Red Planet, cultivating in what we could all see coming. A flock of scientists fleeing for their lives! We're not gonna change our uniforms from lab coats to tracksuits. They're practically all dead anyway, spare the fastest runner, the old and scraggly Dr. Carmack, a less than subtle reference to John Carmack, played by Robert Russell. His escape only lasts long enough to send a message about implementing a quarantine, though, which makes its way over to the Marine Corps and down to Sarge, played by The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Use extreme prejudice? Extreme prejudice. If necessary, search and destroy. Over. Search and destroy. Orders received and understood. Out. The movie's called Doom. What were the chances that the mission would be any more complicated than go forward and kill everything in your way? Wouldn't you know it, though. This mission came right as Sarge's unit was getting ready for their vacation! Well, nix that. The UAC needs you, so fuck your plans, fuck your hopes, fuck your dreams, get to work! Including someone who likely wasn't part of their squad yet. Kid! Son, you are now in the Rapid Response Tactical Squad. The Double RTS. The Kid, played by Al Weaver, the rookie who's never been on any mission before because we've got to check off as many cliches as possible here. With that in mind, we also just so happen to have the guy who's got his family history and a dark past linked to the mission location, and happens to be an action hero named John, John Grimm, aka Reaper, played by Carl Urban. Our gigantic stoic guy with a minigun, Destroyer, played by Deboya Opari, a squirrely looking scumbag Portman, played by Richard Brake, the quiet, faithful type Goat, played by Ben Daniels, I can't believe it's not LL Cool J, Duke, played by Raz Adoti, and finally Mac, played by Yao Chin. Now that they're all together, Sarge shows them the message the UAC facility on Mars sent out. We've had a level 5 breach. Implement quarantine procedures immediately. I repeat, this is Dr. Carman. Classified research on the line, like from which we learn even less than we did in the opening. It's bad when the paragraph in the instruction manual of the original game marked story has more exposition than this. Sarge explains it even simpler. Go there, eliminate the threat, and secure the place. What threat? Goes like this, see? If it's trying to kill you, it's a threat. I doubt my fiancé will accept that excuse when she asks what the hell happened to her cat. Of course, in order to get to Mars, they're going to have to take the Ark. Thus, they all psych themselves up as the chopper heads over to that facility on Earth. Look alive, man! The Ark facility itself is actually deep, deep underground, because when you build your floating CGI water balls that blast people through outer space at faster than light speeds, it's fun to arbitrarily move through a bunch of solid matter while you're at it. Once on Mars, the team meets up with another face, played by Dexter Fletcher. Marcus Penzarowski, you call me Pinky. Oh gee, I wonder what's gonna happen to him later. As it's important to keep the quarantine and secure the facility first and foremost, Sarge says fuck it and leaves Pinky with a whole one guy to help him guard the Ark, Mac, 
The rest of the team heads inside, telling the employees, sorry, quarantine in place, nobody's going anywhere, and meeting up with a certain scientist, Samantha Grimm, John's sister, played by Rosamund Pike. She says she's coming along to retrieve some data, but the Reaper doesn't care what she wants out of this. This is a military operation, Doctor. We're really not here to retrieve our science homework. Look, I got an idea. Why don't you ask your CO what your orders are? Kill everything that gets in our way. Oh, but retrieve UAC property was one of those side missions. Darn it! Also, Duke's looking to get laid. Tell me you didn't let a fine-looking piece of ass like that get away from you, Reaper. She's my sister. No shit. Don't do this again, man. Do what? It's bad enough when the King of Action Games makes a slow crawl, can't see shit survival horror entry, but I don't think fans are going to be quite as forgiving if they turn it into a dating simulator. Either way, she's part of the team now, and they hear that a total of six scientists went missing when Dr. Carmack's lab was locked down. So that's their destination, so soon as Pinky gives them the map data. Carmack's lab is isolated from the rest of the facility. The airlock is the only way in or out. <sighs> Fucking linear level design. As this is far too many characters to chat back and forth, Sarge splits them up and fans them out, keeping the Grimms together because awkwardness is fun, as we see when Pinky tries to make small talk with Mac. You don't look like a Mac. Katsuhiko Kumanosuke Takahashi. So, Mac. You gonna ask Reaper if his name's really Reaper next? Pinky? As the team checks the rooms for any signs of hostiles or survivors, they come up mostly empty in that regard. The genetics lab has plenty of creepy horror props for them in a gawk at, and some caged monkeys and shit, but not what they're looking for. Samantha and John make it to the computer that somehow isn't hooked up with the rest of the network, and she gets to work downloading that oh-so-important data, while Goat and Portman find more evidence of weird secrets. A holding cell. It makes you think that. Touch it. Yeah! Because while the UAC can't afford proper emergency lights, they can still somehow spring for a few extra thousand volts to pump into the walls. While the team stumbles around in the dark, in the most literal way possible, the Grimms are waiting out the file transfer time long enough for Reaper to realize the very odd nature of this archaeological dig on Mars. You found human remains. Humanoid. Lucy and her child were our first major find. And of course, for those who don't know, Lucy is the name of the Australopithecus that was discovered a long time ago. Missing link between humans and apes, first hominid, all that jazz. Ancient human-ish remains are but the tip of the iceberg, though, as Lucy has something that humans don't have. And coincidentally, chimpanzees do. A 24th chromosome pair! This isn't just something to make her dumb and hairy, though. The extra pair makes her super strong, super fit, super intelligent. But problems arose when she discovered the Super Nintendo and started ordering everything supersized. They also found evidence said chromosome pair was synthetic, but despite all this information they found on the genetic makeup of the lost civilization, they still can't figure out exactly why they're all fucking dead. Maybe they just weren't with time. You don't shield a baby from time. You do if time's coming at you with motherfucking chainsaw hands! Never mind the archaeological mystery that has fuck all to do with the game's storyline, Goat and Portman spot something slinking around in the shadows, which sneaks with the grace and fluidity of myself in your average stealth game. <laughs> fortunately, Doom ain't no friggin' stealth game. Just as fortunately, all their shots miss because as it turns out, the shoot first, ask questions later strategy isn't the smartest one when you're looking for survivors. This is Dr. Carmack! Why didn't he say so? Well, he's not exactly of sound mind at the moment. Get a med kit. That's not gonna work. They only recover 25 health and get used automatically when you step on them. Having found one survivor, and an arm, the group sends Dr. Carmack to the infirmary while continuing to search for survivors. You know what that means. Everyone can start establishing the various reasons they're going to be killed later. Do you have any? Do I have any? God damn it. I took his name in vain. I know Yuri is best waifu, but go! Uh, little book you've been reading has some less than pleasant things to say about self-mutilation. Never mind that for now. The kid in Portman find a survivor. The best kind of survivor. A naked woman.
You know, most people just swipe left. So it might have been a little presumptuous to refer to her as a survivor, but the film moves on to come to a halt and explain to us these things called nanowalls exist. Duke's not the biggest fan, but hey, when you have the technology to make doors out of tiny floating fields of microscopic machines that only carry a massive risk of harm if they malfunction, why wouldn't you? Carmack also pops up to exposit something, but shut it down, it's inside, doesn't really help all that much without context. Ah oh, well, in the suite for survivors, Reaper and Goat manage to find another scientist. Sir, are you okay? Okay. Seems fine, it's just your usual experimentation on rats. Taste tests count. But when he charges the men, they have to take him down. All this slinking around in the dark running into zombies is getting a little boring, though. So why not throw a hulking monster in the mix and kick off the heavy metal? One reason against it is because we're not in an action scene. The damn thing just runs off into the sewer system. I thought being in the shit was a figure of speech. Get in the goddamn hole, Portman. You know, gotta be all up in my ass about it, Sarge. Spread the cheeks, Portman! While they explore the sewer, we take a break to establish that Dr. Carmack's blood test came back and it matches none of the staff on record. Can't really try again, as the guy's up and fucked off on top of that. Anyway, back in the sewer, we see everything's very dark and wet and confusing. But at the end of all of it, Goat has managed to find something. Dr. Willis? An imp leaping out of the darkness to ravage his very soul. I mean, at least that's what imps looked like in Doom 3. And only Doom 3. They don't throw fireballs, though, or even claw. It attaches a sentient tongue thing that does some zombie vampire facehugger shit to Goat's neck. Then it's after Reaper. And a few bullets is all it takes to take it down. Well, it's not that surprising, imps are basic fucking enemies. Concerned about the quarantine, Sarge drags Goat's bleeding ass through the area all the rest of the people are waiting in, demanding that they all go to the Ark and leave the facility at once! Funny, considering they seem to have a more direct path to the infirmary when dealing with Dr. Carmack. Unsurprisingly, Goat is fucking dead, and Samantha has no idea what in the hell that monster they bagged is. Sarge takes control of the situation, though, saying they need to get all the people through the Ark and prevent anything else from crossing it at all costs. The Grimms also point out that there's this archaeological dig site that might not be secure, so in the spirit of security over all of the consideration, they tell Mac, fuck it, form up, leave Pinky with a couple grenades and a pistol. He'll be fine. You can't leave me here. I'm not a soldier. Why don't you go fuck yourself? This bullshit. You're supposed to protect me. Fuck secure. Everyone's still running around in circles and screaming, but... Eh? You would think this kind of behavior is what you do before pulling out all the stops and nuking the site from orbit, but why spoil a mission with something like tactics or keeping your team alive when you're only here to make monsters smell what the rock is cooking? We don't know what we're dealing with here. It's SOP to call in reinforcements when it's a situation. We are the reinforcements. Well, who the hell was the first line of defense? Naked zombie chick? Speaking of scientists in a desperate search for brains, Dr. Grimm sent Duke off for some supplies, but he hasn't returned. So she leaves the safety of the lab to get the crap scared out of her when he returns as instructed. However, a dog is nearby. Such terror. Well, maybe not quite on the same level as this. Ugh, the minute Doom introduces gun jams, I'm out of there. It's annoying when it reminds us that reloading is a thing. Fortunately for Duke, they did spend an excessive amount of time establishing this handy-dandy nanowall technology from earlier, allowing them to survive, and even capture one of the creatures. While this is going on, Matt goes forth to check the other areas, in the dark and by himself, while everyone else examines the door near the dig site. Destroyer report. We've reached the north airlock. It's secure. Console indicates nothing's come in or out for 26 hours. <laughs> And the body count arises. As this hulking motherfucker escapes them yet again, Sarge orders Pinky to use the grenade if anything comes in there, and keep it from getting through the Ark. At which point, it's mentioned that such a maneuver would destroy the Ark, but never mind that until the climax. Something is going on back in the infirmary. Goat returns from the dead. So they're zombies. But they get... The thing on the necks of the vampires? Oh, God, I had enough of this riddle with I Am Legend. 
Whatever the hell Goat is, it's still mostly human, and he has enough control over his faculties to BEAT HIMSELF TO DEATH before he can finish turning into one of those creatures. So he can't turn because he's dead. But he already died, and he came back because he was turning. And now he... You know, fuck it, Portman has something very important to say. I gotta take a dump. What? Now? Yeah, unless you want me shit in my pants right here. Well, privacy is a very weird thing to suggest when you're surrounded by monsters. Wouldn't you want someone watching your back at that time? Not when your actual reason for slowly slinking off and finding a toilet to hide in is to secretly call for reinforcements! Which hardly seems like a bad idea. I know there's that Hell Knight still kicking around. It's not much, but it's what the movie's got. Zombie men, imps, and a Hell Knight. How scary. Because a chain gun would easily take one of these motherfuckers out, though, Destroyer is disarmed before the fight can really get underway. Down in the cell, the two do battle. And it's entertaining enough. All the Hell Knight does is throw the guy around and punch him, but he holds his own, then dies from a fall, because that's a satisfying way to end it. Now, well, while we're at it, Portman can get fucking killed as well, shortly before Sarge runs in to try and save him! Oh, uh, yeah, and Sarge has the BFG. I kind of skipped over him getting it. They really make a bigger deal out of it than it really is. I mean, he sees it, and then later he comes by and unlocks the case, and he gets it, and all he ever does with it is destroy walls. With a few freshly dead allies, the team regroups in the infirmary, so Samantha has a chance to exposit new information. We all know Goat killed himself so he wouldn't turn, but where's our proof that the people turn into imps? Our captured specimen right there, whose ear betrays the truth that it is in fact the escaped Dr. Carmack. Don't worry though, Samantha thinks she might be able to change him back. Dr. Carmack's condition is irreversible. <laughs> You know, ever stop to think maybe all he needed was a little penicillin? Sarge isn't here to play trauma center, but Phoenix Wright as he interrogates Samantha, demanding she show them what exactly the data she was sent to retrieve was. As it just so happens, it's biological experiments on human subjects! But what is it that Dr. Carmack injected this poor bastard with? Chromosome 24. Oh my god. The entire plot is centered around magical biological goo with genetic powers that never fucking had anything to do with the story in any of the games. God forbid we involve hell in a Doom movie. Don't you get it? It's this place. It's hell. It always was. Oh, don't give me that. This is Doom. You're supposed to rip and tear, not bitch and moan. Also, remember how Sarge was so insistent on knowing what the data was? Well, it turns out he actually doesn't care at all, and continues the operation! She has to get the rest of the data, and he has to KILL EVERYTHING! A task made slightly more difficult by the fact that the monster made it to the Ark door, and surprise surprise, half a man and a handgun are less than capable of stopping it. Being unable to contact his sister over the comms, Reaper rushes back to make sure she's safe. As it turns out, yes, she just can't pick up the phone while she's busy expositing that the chromosome thingy is infectious, but those disembodied tongues only go after specific targets. And something something turns you into a Superman if you're a good boy, but a horrifying monster if you're evil. Maybe C-24 is what destroyed the population. It would explain why some of them had to build the Ark to escape to a new beginning. Man, it's a good thing we named it the Ark. It seems so fitting now! With this new information, Reaper calls Sarge to let him know that some people are simply immune! Which isn't exactly correct, but they can't turn into monsters, so maybe don't kill them? Problem is, Sarge really seems to like the idea of killing everyone. So much so that he's very disappointed with the fact that the kid found a group of survivors and didn't blow them away! He even refuses to do so after being given the direct order! Go to hell. The Rock might actually be the bad guy. He explains that insubordination is punishable by death. We don't have too much time to get all sad over this as the monsters attack. Or a monster and a horde of zombies. Either way, the whole team gets pretty damn beaten up thanks to this, and the fact that the nano walls have decided now's the perfect time to malfunction. I'm not 
to post it. Hey, you had the chance to play Reaper, and you were all like, oh, but Sarge sounds like a much more interesting character. Which is true, but still. Reaper, however, is wounded. Don't worry, remember Lucy's superhuman powers? Samantha thinks she can use Chromosome 24 to infuse John with that, and pretty much enable God Mode for him. He's not sure his soul is pure enough to handle it, though. I've done some bad things. I, I took a penny. W without giving, I... double dipped. Oh god. Oh god, my browsing history. Ah, should be fine, so she shoots him full of plot juice, and he passes out. By the time John comes to, Samantha's gone, but so is all his weakness, pain, and injuries. This means it's time to finally make the Doom movie look something like Doom, with the first-person sequence of hallway running, monster shooting, and rockin' music! I remember the rumors when the Doom movie was getting made, and people were saying it's going to be entirely in first person. And then the film came out and they just had the short first person sequence, and then people were like, of course it's not entirely in first person. Who could make an action movie entirely in first person? That's impossible! Then Hardcore Henry came out. After enough corridor shooting, we leave first person to show that John has found his sister, still alive, and the only one left to kill is Sarge, now clearly infected, and, uh, well, he's always been kind of a psychotic asshole. Uh, oh, well, he may have the BFG, but it's okay. I've got one round. He wastes the only shot on the fucking wall anyway. And yes, The Rock is our final boss for this game. Zombies, imps, and one lone hell knight is about the best we've got. I guess they figured if you have Dwayne Johnson, he's gotta still look like Dwayne Johnson. He does start turning a little, but the vampire rock is hardly a demon. I guess he does wrap some metal around his arms, so that's cyber demon ish Well, fuck it, Reaper throws his ass back to Mars through the Ark and tosses a grenade in for good measure to destroy him and the portal forever. Therefore, happy ending! John and Samantha Grimm survive, and they return to the surface safe and sound. Except, of course, the fact that John is infused with chromosome 24, which seems to be highly infectious if the monsters are anything to go by, and they have a tendency of turning people into monsters. Oops. Anyway, that was Doom. That wasn't Doom. If you go into this movie expecting it to be like the games, even the third game, which is a bit of an oddball in the series, you're only setting yourself up to be disappointed. Doom is Doom in name alone, and art design, and companies, uh, occupations, and weapons. Okay, so there's more Doom in Doom than nothing, but it's still a separate animal. One thing it does keep from Doom 3 is the odd in-between of survival horror and action. Doom 1 and 2, and later Doom 2016, are all about big firefights with hordes of enemies in fantastic locations. Doom 3, and by extension the Doom movie, is about sneaking around in the dark trying to find the monsters in badly lit rooms, wishing someone somewhere invented duct tape so you wouldn't have to keep switching to your flashlight. It sort of works for Doom 3, but the Doom movie has very few instances where it allows the action to play out in an action scene. So few, in fact, that when we do finally get some action on screen, it feels very odd. It doesn't help that the zombies look like what you'd expect to see out of a Sega CD game or an Area 51-style light gun game, both examples obviously not being Doom. However, despite these complaints, the movie itself isn't terrible. Well, it's hard to say it's straight up bad, even. The sets look okay, the monster suits look good, the acting is okay, the characters are okay. It's a very average movie overall. Nothing special to it, really. If it wasn't called Doom, we probably would have forgotten about it by now. As it stands, though, Doom is a decent enough flick if you want to watch horror or action and can't quite make up your mind. Coming in at three conveniently named Ancient Teleportation Machines out of five. It's okay if you don't care that it's supposed to be Doom. But then again, if you don't care about Doom, you probably wouldn't have been checking this movie out in the first place anyway. Thank you all for watching. I've been Dagger Shadow. And remember, medkits only do so much. If you really need some healing, grab a Soul Sphere.
Tom. Mac. 